Welcome to another VO Radio Show, a bite-sized version. I'm Andrew Peters, and up in Sydney is... Is Robbo. How are you, mate? I'm good, mate. How are you going? <laughs> good. Yeah, really good, shaky, shaky start there, shaky start. <laughs> um, now, this week we'll talk about monitoring, mm. and uh, the reason I wanted to talk about it is because I've never really thought about it before. Mm. But um, a week or so back, I had to make up uh, a, a list of music for a, a forthcoming event. Mm. And uh, so I was in the studio and, and uh, just cutting music together for a playlist so I could play music all night. And uh, of course, while I'm doing that, I'm listening to the music through reference monitors, mm. which I never do. And I've just realized how accurate uh, reference monitors are. Yeah. Yeah. You hear a song you've heard a gazillion times through hi-fi speakers, and then you run them through a reference monitors, and you're just like, what? I haven't heard that before. Yeah. What the, what's going on there? That's the trick, isn't it? Absolutely. Yep. Yeah. It's, um, people, people don't understand that, you know, people, people who put up, you know, hi-fi speakers in their home studio or, or listen to, you know, Beats headphones when they're working or whatever don't realise perhaps that, you know, it's actually colouring the sound. They're actually designed to sound a certain way. Um, they're not actually a flat response. Um, so yeah, so it's, it can be quite eye opening sitting down yeah. listening to reference monitors because it's a completely different sound. You're absolutely right. Yeah. So if, if anyone who's seen, hasn't tried and experimented with this thing, grab um, a, your, one of your favourite songs. Make sure it's a, a good version of it, not a, an MP3, but a, a really accurate, you know, well mastered version of it. Mm. Let's be old school. And let's then, say CD. <laughs> let's say CD, and then play it through um, your reference monitors, and you'll. If they're good ones, you'll completely hear the difference, mm. which is... Uh, so what, what is the main difference between studio monitors and hi-fi speakers? Well, I pretty much think, as we, as we just said, that the hi-fi speakers are actually designed to sound a certain way. You know, they're designed to be bass heavy, you know, with a bit more high end to sort of give the vocal some more presence or whatever. I mean, it's a bit like flicking through the EQ presets on iTunes or something like that. The, the, the speakers are actually designed to have a similar response. Um, and especially headphones. I mean, certainly you listen to, you know, any of the big high-priced commercial brands of headphones and what you're actually listening to is more of a coloured sound than what's actually coming off the original source material. Um, but, you know, that's what people want, I suppose, and that's why people have a preference in terms of, you know, be it Sony or, you know, um, uh, any of those other commercial brands when it comes to home stereo as opposed yep. to... To um to others, so because they now just like been, the sound. Yeah, you've been monitoring in headphones with this TV show. Oh, yeah, I'm having a bit of a nightmare with that. I um I think we talked about this a couple of weeks ago. I I I got invited to to mix a TV program, but I had to go to them uh, to do it, and they're just in a big open sort of office area, and I've just been shoved in the corner with my laptop and was mixing in headphones, um, and not having a pair of decent headphones to mix in. Um, I actually went out and bought myself a, a pair of KRK uh, KNS 6400s, I think they are from memory, and I can't tell you what they are because I'm wearing them. But, um, <laughs> but uh, I, I, whilst it is that whilst they are a flat response, I have struggled with the mix only because it's closer to your head. It gets in your head. It's a different way of listening um, as opposed yeah. to listening to speakers. Um, it's also very fatiguing. Um, by the end of the day, my ears are exhausted for want of a better term. Um, and I've actually had to spend the last, I think the program has been going to air for about six weeks now. It's probably taken me about six weeks to get it sounding right on air. Um, purely for that reason, just because in a completely different listening environment, I actually have struggled. Um, it hasn't sounded awful. And, and, I, and, and, you know, to the average year listening to the TV show, they probably wouldn't even notice. But in terms of, I, I think more I've noticed in terms of music level under dialogue um, and sound effect and all that sort of stuff that sits under dialogue, um, because it's a bit more in your head, you sort of, your brain tells you it's a bit louder than it is, actually is and all that sort of stuff. So I was noticing on air that the music was getting a bit lost um, and sort of realised I could pump it up a bit more in the sound effect. Um, so yeah, so it's, it's been a very interesting experiment, but, um, in terms of monitoring in here, I actually have in, in here being my studio, my home studio, I have, uh, two lots of speakers. I actually have some passive Dynaudio acoustics, um, that are my main monitors 
Um, and then I have a little pair of Fostex that I use as a reference. Um, so it's, and it's kind of interesting talking about the difference in monitors, the difference even in the sound between those two. Um, the Fostex are a lot smaller, uh, although they seem to have a lot more top end than the bigger ones underneath. So, so yeah, so I sort of try to fit my, is, uh, what I found is I just try to listen to my mixes on as many sources as possible. Um, and if they all sound reasonably the same, then I'm fairly confident that I'm happy with where everything's sitting. So, um, so I do have a little pair of desktop, just cheapy computer speakers that I also reference sort of just as a final reference, I'll listen down to something or if it's a TV program, I'll just flick through it and have a listen to make sure that it's all sitting in the right place and, um, and go from there. But it's, it is a, it is a minefield when you start talking about monitoring in home studios or any studio. That's why we, we did that experiment with George Whittam um, about a month ago where mm. I sent off a file from here for him to listen to and, you know, he actually gives you the chart of his hearing test. So you kind of go, okay, well, his hearing's perfect. Um, so that, that, that was good for me because it gave me an idea that, okay, what he was hearing, he, he said was fine. Mm. So now I know when I'm listening through my monitors in the studio that what I'm hearing, which I've always heard, is fine. If I start that's hearing cool. something that's not the same then I know there's going to be an issue somewhere. Yeah. Which is kind of handy. At least you've got a reference, and that's the whole thing about studio monitors is um, having a reference that you can trust. That's right. Look, and, and I think the thing is, you know, for the people who are listening to this podcast, they're probably more, they're probably not people like me who are going to be sitting at home mixing stuff. They're going to be more people like you who are, are sitting at home recording stuff and then sending it out. Yeah. Um, I think once you've got your place once you've got yourself set up in a place that everyone's happy with what you're sending them and you're not getting people going, it's a bit too sibilant, it's a bit too this, it's a bit too that, don't screw with it. <laughs> Just let it sit oh, and, absolutely. Um, and put it out. But, um, well, you know, people like you who, you know, can't walk into a music store without buying six new microphones, though, it's a little different. <laughs> <laughs> not anymore. I've got too many. I'm now selling. But, I'm slogging uh, them off. Watch out for yeah. the fire sale, folks. <laughs> there's no fire and there's no sale. <laughs> No, it's interesting though, and, I, and the monitors I picked up, they, they were ones that were used, I saw in a lot of studios at some, oh, probably 10 years ago, but I don't see them so much anymore. Yeah. Mainly Genelex you see and... Um, yeah, Genelex is a big one. Yeah, that, that main, the main monitors I see. Mm. Mm. But uh, It's probably about time for me to, uh, to update my passive ones because they're, they're about 15 years old. So um, I don't know, there's just something about passive speakers that I like. I don't know what it is, but um, so I'll probably stick with passive uh, even though the amp's got to sit out the outside the room and there's ugly cables that run around the corner of the room to get to the speakers, there's just something about them that I am, um, I do like. And I think, especially now, having one passive and one um, one active pair of speakers in the studio, I I kind of do like listening to the difference between the two of them. And you know, just give, a bit like you, I suppose, it gives me that extra bit of confidence that you know, when when it does get to you know, Joe blogs at home listening on his on his um his fancy schmancy uh, home hi-fi speakers that it is going to sound very schmick. Absolutely. Yes, well, mine are, are, are not passive. They're uh, active speakers and I like them. I like them a lot. I did actually sell my amplifier a while ago mm. to somebody else. In fact, mm. I, mean, I think I did a trade. Yeah, right. But um, Yeah, but I do. The, these Yamahas are fantastic and they're mm. not the NS10s because they're passive anyway. That's but right. they did do an active. they did do an active version of the Yeah, never very the popular NS10s. though. They, uh, no. They didn't, never really went off. We should, I suppose mm. we should also explain for anybody who's not up au fait with uh, studio terms that um, an active speaker is one that doesn't require an amplifier. They've got amplifiers built in and passive. You actually need an external amplifier to make them work. So um, just yeah. for those of you who probably if one or two of you who didn't know that, there you go, you've learned something today. <laughs> Including, uh, well, yeah, me as well probably. Yeah. But uh, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. Oh dear. If you're passive, oh. you're sitting on the couch and if you're active, you're out going for a run with the dog, right? That's that's your idea yeah. of passive and active. Yeah, well, there's passive and active speakers and there's passive and active actors and or uh, passive and active workers and I'm being a passive worker at the moment sitting in here. <laughs> Although I heard you saying before we started recording you were being summoned for a cup of tea, so life's not too bad. <laughs> that's right. Would you like a cup of tea? Oh, look. <laughs> hope there's a biscuit. Oh, I'm moving to Melbourne. <laughs> <laughs> Cup of tea and a biscuit at, in the afternoon. Gotta love that. Beautiful. We'll go and enjoy the Scotch finger and I'll uh, talk to him. I should be careful when <laughs> yes. I say that, shouldn't I? <laughs> yes. I'm sure anybody outside of Australia is going, oh, right. Oh, really? Right. Someone's been giving someone the Scotch finger. <laughs> but, uh, 
<laughs> Enjoy the Oreo and the cup of tea. <laughs> yeah, I will do. <laughs> the VO Radio Show is produced in the studios of Voodoo Sound. To polish your next audio production, check us out at voodoo-sound.com. Find professional voices simply all in one place. Realtimecasting.com, including me.